Are you divorcing a narcissist and wondering how you can possibly come out on top? By the end of this video, you'll gain a whole new perspective on what winning might look like and how you can finally find peace. But first, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you'll be notified when I publish a new video every Friday. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. Through my one-on-one -on -one and group coaching programs, I've helped hundreds of women and a handful of men figure out how to win their divorce from a narcissistic spouse so that they can go on and create a new life that's joyful and fulfilling and drama-free. Okay, are you ready? Here's the number one secret to winning your divorce from a narcissist. Rethink what winning looks like. Okay, so here's what I mean. The second the narcissist knows what your non-negotiable is, the thing that you are attached to, he will be hell-bent on making sure you don't get it. So here's how you are outsmart the narcissist. Rethink what winning might mean to you. Let go of any attachment you have to any outcome. All right, I know it's a lot easier said than done, but if you can rethink what winning looks like, you'll have the upper hand. All right, so let's look at the three most common areas that couples fight about during a divorce. Number one, custody and visitation. So if you're like most people, right out of the gate, you're thinking, I have to have sole custody of my children. They need to be with me, and if they're gonna visit their father, then it has to be supervised because this person, this narcissist, is trying to hurt me at all costs, like gloves off. They are going to use the children to hurt me. They're going to tell the children lies about me. They're going to damage the children emotionally. They're going to keep them from me when it's time for them to come back. I'm, I'm scared they're going to take off and I'll never see my children again. That's what they're threatening to do, all right? So, you're attached to this outcome that you're going to have sole custody and the narcissist is going to be watched by a supervisor if and when he ever sees his children. So right off the bat, you're attached to something that is very unlikely to happen. I'm not a lawyer, but what I've seen over the years and years that I've been doing this it is very, very unlikely that a court is going to order sole custody to one parent. Uh, no matter how horrible your narcissistic spouse is to you, if he hasn't harmed the children, it's very, very unlikely that he is not going to have joint custody or a lot of visitation. Unless he's done something terrible to the children that you can prove which is another stepping stone, right? You have to be able to prove uh, that he's been abusive to your children. Otherwise, the chances are there's going to be joint custody and visitation. So if you can embrace that outcome right out of the gate, you're gonna save so much time, energy, and money on legal fees. If you realize that you should rethink what winning looks like here. Winning here looks like figuring out how to have joint custody with the narcissistic spouse. And I've got lots of tools for that. I will put a link in the description to a video I made about parallel parenting, which is the only way you can parent with a co-parent with a narcissist. So you can rethink what winning looks like here by understanding that your children are going to go back and forth between your home and their father's home. Number two, keeping the home. I hear so many people tell me that is non-negotiable. I have to stay in my home. I have to have the home that my children know, that my children have grown up in. It's the only home they've ever known. I can't even think about having to move out of my house. This is where we belong. This is, I have to have it all to myself. I have to have enough money to be able to stay in the home. We can't, have, we can't be forced to sell the home. Let's rethink that. Is it really what you want? 
Is that how, what a win has to look like for you? Because when you play out the scenario, I know we're emotionally charged about it in the beginning, but what happens is I've seen people fight and fight and fight and fight for the home. And then once they are in it after the fact, it's not what they thought and they end up leaving because guess what? Dad's missing from the home. So it's never your home. It's the home that was their home when you were together. So your children realize dad is missing. His seat at the table is empty. His stuff is not in his closet. And all those family memories are in that home hanging over your head. So it ends up that most people realize they need a fresh start. You want to create a new home, a drama-free home that's yours. Uh, where you're head of the household, where you've made all the decisions, it's all your choices and your rules, and it's all you single parenting in your brand new space. That is what a win really looks like. So if you can rethink, shift your mindset away from being attached to having to keep to keep the home. Now, great, let the narcissist think that you absolutely it's non-negotiable have to keep the house but you know that you really have no attachment to it and you can use that as leverage before we get to number three will you do something for me i want to know if you're starting to see the possibility of rethinking what a win would look like in your divorce so if you are starting to see the possibility of shifting your mindset around what you think you might have wanted before and opening your eyes to what you might see as a win now, type a hell yes in the comments for me. Okay, ready for number three? Money. Here's what people think. I have to get this amount of money or I will not be able to survive. Or I have to get X amount of child support or I won't be able to take care of the children. All right, when you're attached to a specific number, a specific outcome that way, you are making yourself so vulnerable to the narcissist's continued abuse, right? You're making yourself vulnerable. So yes, you want to fight for whatever you think you deserve in the settlement, but don't be married to the outcome. Know that you can do whatever it takes. You're smart enough, intelligent enough, ambitious enough, hardworking enough, scrappy enough. You can figure out how to create a fabulous new life that meets your end goal, which is not married to the narcissist and drama free, where you get to be in control of your own destiny where you get to make the decisions uh, for your family, where you get to make the choices and uh, live a happy and stress-free life on your terms. So that's your goal. And you can do it no matter what. You can figure it out. Also, when you're attached to a certain outcome, you're a victim. You are giving all the power and all the control to someone else to take that away from you. If you think that you cannot survive without a specific outcome, then you're making yourself vulnerable and you stay in victim mode. You're, you're still in that victim mentality. Uh, you are the damsel in distress tied to the, the railroad tracks. That's not who you wanna be. You want to empower yourself and that means being open to other options. Once you do that, you move out of victim mentality and into a creator mentality where you know you can go on and create whatever life you want for yourself. I've created a nine page guide to help you make these mindset shifts so you can rethink what winning in your divorce might look like and I would love to send it to you. I'll put a link in the description where you can request your own copy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. 
Now, here are some other videos you might like to watch that will help you divorce a narcissist.